All right, well, now that we have our, uh, our um, pelt seams created, let's uh, go ahead and actually uh, put together and, and uh, assemble all of our pelt maps. So let's go in here and select uh, Polygon. And remember how we were testing this before? Well, we're going to do the same process to finally actually create our pelt maps. All right, and so let's get started. Let's go ahead and start with the, uh, the head and expand the polygon. So all I, got, I did was I went in and selected polygons and uh, sub-object under unwrap UVW, not under edit edi poly, edible poly, but under unwrap UVW, selected polygon. And then uh, in here I go to expand. And what we're going to do is we're going to now click on the pelt map button. Looks like a like an animal skin pelt, <laughs> sort of. Okay. And it brings up this screen right here. Now, when you when we do this, we're going to want to oftentimes, I'm just scrolling my mouse wheel to kind of zoom out a little bit. Otherwise, we could use the zoom tool that's inside of here, uh, which is down here. There's a lot of tools in here that we're not going to use right now, so don't get you know intimidated by all this stuff. We're not going to work with those at this at this time. Uh, but if you wanted to use the zoom tool to zoom in and out, you know, it's the zoom tool within this area. It's like its own little application, sort of. Um, but really what we're going to be doing is we want to select and we're going to end up scaling. So I'm going to select the scale button and I'm going to select these stretcher verts, if you will, vertices, if you want to call them that. I'm not sure what else to call them, actually, but they have to do with our stretcher. And this is like uh, as if we were stretching a, a you know a canvas or stuff, something. And what we're going to do is we're going to scale these this out because we want this to expand out farther. And I want to make sure that it expands evenly. So we're going to get it kind of centered in there. All right. And then over here with this dialog that pops up along with this interface, we're going to click on Start Pelt and watch what happens. It stretches it out based on our pelt seams. Okay. Now, if for any reason, then we can just then we can say start relax, and sometimes that kind of brings it in. Sometimes it messes it up like that. So we're going to say cancel on that, <laughs> and don't worry about what happened in here because anytime we do another pelt map, let's do this again. You can see that it, it's going to replace it. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to um, I'm going to bring this out even more than I did before. And with the, with the face, we're going to find that we might have to do stuff like that with objects like the face because the face has a lot of detail in it and it's really, and it's very round and it's very difficult that not just the face, but the whole head, it's very round and it's hard to, uh, to stretch that out as much as we want. So I'm going to pull this out even farther. I'm going to go with start pelt and we're not going to relax at this time. Obviously that didn't turn out so well. So we're going to say commit. And we're going to leave it at that. And that will be just fine. Now, it's a funny shape. I know that. It looks kind of odd. But it's all based on where our seams are uh, on our, you know, on the head. Okay. And then we can just put this away now. Okay. And what we're going to end up with is a whole bunch of jumbled up, you know, pelt maps on top of each other. Uh, but don't worry about that. It's going to look odd, but we're going to be fine. All right. So let's go to the next uh, section here. And let's just go with the front of the shirt. And we're gonna, and I'm not gonna be talking as much as we do this because we're gonna go through this pretty quickly. And go to pelt map. And uh, I think this one, well, it can't hurt to expand it out a little bit. So once again, I'm going to select these verts with the scale tool. Hold down the control key so I can select more. Oops, gotta be careful just to select those. I don't want to select anything inside of there. Don't want to select anything inside. Just run the stretcher. And then I scale this out a little bit more and then say start pelt and commit and that'll work out fine see how they're going to lay on top of each other okay put that away let's do the back of the shirt stay logical do the back of the shirt expand and we already know that this is going to expand okay but if we ever see anything that doesn't we want to be careful to go back and make sure we fix things uh, and the nice thing about it is if you have to fix something, you can always go back and repelt it. It's not going to hurt. It's not going to mess up anything else. And it will um, <clears throat> uh, it'll just replace whatever you have already pelted. So go ahead and say start pelt. Once again, zoom out a little bit. Scale this out a bit. I'm select these 
stretch your vertices. I think I got them all. If, we, if I don't, then we'll be able to tell right away because it look, won't look round. And then start pelt and commit. Okay. Now let's do the um, let's do the, the, the pants. Let's do the uh, the hands and the, and the, and the uh, arms later. Let's do the front of the pants. So like that. start pelt. Once again, zoom out a little bit so we can select these guys here. Scale it out a bit. And these are fairly flat, so it's going to do, do a good job here. Start pelt and then commit. All right, go around to the back. Grab these. Expand. Start pelt. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom out a bit. Bit. Start pelt. Commit. All right. Now we're going to end up resizing these somewhat later on. We'll see what what happens with that. <clears throat> All right. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do the feet. They're pretty straightforward. So select the foot. Expand. Pelt. Zoom out. So we're not worried about the proportional size between these different objects right now because we're going to have to fix that later no matter what. So we're just trying to make sure that we get the best possible stretched out pelt map that we can. That looks good. Come on. Doesn't look like the shoe though, does it? It's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and do um, the other top of the shoe. The other left, the right foot. Expand. Oop. Try that again. Do that. There we go. Expand. And uh, uh, see how what a big mess is turning out to look like, but we don't care. We're going to be able to take care of that really easy in just a few minutes. Oops. There we go. I got to do that. See. There we go. I'm going to select things in there, uh, and then scale. Maybe even move it a little bit so it's centered in there. Just a good idea. Okay. Start a pelt. Commit. Now we'll do the bottom of the shoe. I don't want to forget that. This is going to be really easy. We don't have to even do the pelt because it's completely flat. So we'll just leave that alone. So we'll just simply go and um, do a um, expand. And let's try the, doing the pelt map. Yeah, see, we'll just leave that alone. We don't need to do anything to that. This is a very flat, simple shape. And then say, uh, say commit. And there we go. That's in there. And we'll do the other one. When we have something that's completely flat like that, there's no point in stretching it out. Uh, we'll keep that shape. So do that. Boom. Commit. And there we go. All right. What a mess, huh? How are we going to get that all unraveled? <laughs> no problem. It's going to be very easy, actually. Okay, uh, then let's do the arms and the hands because we got everything else except for the arms and the hands. So let's start with an arm, and this looks all twisted and convoluted. So we definitely want to stretch that out. So we're going to um, scale this out quite a bit. You see how it's twisted a little bit there? Sometimes it's kind of handy. It doesn't usually it does a great job without it. We just want to make it sort of symmetrical. Once in a while, you see it's really obviously twisted. You just do that, no problem. Now, if we didn't do it, it would probably still look great. So we'll go ahead and say start pelt, <clears throat> boom, stretches out the arm. See, flattens it out really nicely. Uh, that's our elbow right there, by the way. And sometimes we're going to need to go in here, like with that vertex with the elbow, uh, and um, and move it over. But we'll do that uh, later. Yeah, you know, since I'm talking about it, why don't I just do it right now? Let's get in here and select it. All right, move to here and move that where it belongs, right there. Okay, we don't want things overlapping even with our with our uh, our pelt maps if we can help it. Okay, and then say commit, and there we have that one. Do the same thing to this arm. So 
that. Skill tool. Select all these. Stretch reverts. Pull it out. Sort of untwist it a little bit. Start belt. And then we probably have, well, see, we don't have that same issue on this one for some odd reason. I mean, we can zoom in a little bit, but see that bird is in the middle. No no telling why. You know, it's just one of those weird phenomena that happens with this stuff. Uh, but it looks great. So we're going to go ahead and say commit. So there we are on that one. All right, now, one side of the hand, uh, the, uh, his right hand. And let's go ahead and um, we can put this away. We could probably leave this open the whole time. It doesn't really matter. But uh, I like to put it away, start with a fresh slate, you know, every time we do this. Uh, and what this is doing is just putting all these, these pelt maps in as we get them all stretched out and everything and just kind of laying them on top of each other. Uh, but we're going to fix it later, as I said. So we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, zoom out just a little bit. Now that's fairly flat, but it's going to need to be stretched out, obviously. So we may as well uh, get the best possible stretch and flattening as we can. So we're going to scale this out just a little bit. Scale tool. Pull that out. I'd say this is pretty symmetrical, so we'll leave that alone right now. And then say start pelt. Stretches out the hand. Say commit. That looks really good. Okay. And then we'll do the, the uh, palm of the hand. Select all the there. There we go. Pelt. Zoom out. Select these guys. Scale it out. Maybe rotate it just a little bit. That seems more logical. Start pelt. Nice job. There we go. Commit. All right. Let's do the other hand. So yeah, if it replaces the other one anyway, so you don't really have to put this window away. I wasn't thinking about that. So I'm going to zoom out. Make sure we get these scale down a little bit. If we didn't do this, then uh, the fingers oftentimes are the very ends of something that's sticking out like this. We'll get all kind of the vertices and, and the UVWs will get all, all bunched together. They're called UVWs when they're in this mode. Um, exactly the same vertices match up with the, with the UVWs. So start pelt and there we go. So in other words, if we hadn't expanded this out, these, these finger hit tips right here would have been all kind of like jumbled up. And that, that ends up being a little bit of a problem sometimes. And just say commit. There we go. Uh, do the palm on the hand and that should be it. And zoom out again. Using the same um, uh, keystroke, uh, the control and the alt, and my just holding down the middle mouse button and zooming in and out to get that zoom. Otherwise, I would use this tool down here, but I prefer to do it the way that we're used to in 3ds Max. So grab these guys. Oops, come on. And let's get the rotate tool first. Rotate it so it's a little more logical. Scale it out. Okay. Start pelt and commit. And there we have it. Okay, now we have all of this stuff done. So what should, we should, what should happen, and we're going to make sure that we didn't miss anything, and this is a really easy way to do this. As I said, every single UVW on here, and I'm going to select uh, the vertices here, okay, uh, first and show you what I'm talking about. When I select a vertex, uh, or rather a UVW in here, it corresponds with a vertex on the character. Now, if I select all of them, it's selecting all the vertices on the character, and that's what I wanted to see. Now, let's do polygons, and that way we'll know for sure that we didn't miss anything, but it's looking pretty good right now. And I was very confident we didn't miss anything. There's, there's vertices all over the character selected. Now, let me show you, if we go to polygon mode, it's going to be the same concept. Select so like that, every single polygon on the character is selected. Okay, so remember, every every one of these inside of here are called UVWs. They're like vertices, but they're UVWs, and they have to do with mapping coordinates. Okay, everything on here is called a vertex. Okay, 
and their x, y, z coordinates for where these vertex are in space. And the UV, x, y, z coordinates uh, for these vertices correspond exactly with the UVWs uh, on, uh, in our mapping. Okay. All right. So first of all, I'm going to get polygons, get the whole thing selected. Okay. And then we're going to go up to tools and we're going to say pack UVs. And I'm going to leave the defaults. Don't have to do anything. Recursive packing is fine. Say OK. Now that seems fine, doesn't it? OK, well, guess what? Uh, some of the stuff is not exactly um, proportional to the other stuff. Now, it might be close, but it's not going to be perfect. So what we want to do in here is we're going to apply a simple material to our character. So let's get out of here. Close up on PVW. And let's go into our uh, material editor. And we're going to get a new material. Uh, let's put this away too. We don't need that open right now. Uh, we're going to go to the maps rollout. We're going to go to the diffuse color. We're going to go to the checker. Usually we go for bitmap to get a texture or something, but this time we're going for a checker. Okay. It's what's called a procedural map, just like a noise map is a procedural map. We'll say OK. And what that does is it applies a checker pattern to it. But we need to tile this because if we just, well, let's go ahead and apply it to see what it looks like. We're going to apply this to our character. Okay. Uh, hit the, that. Let's make sure that we have uh, transparency turned off. Uh, materials, enable transparency is not. And let's go over to here. Uh, see through is on though. So let's go over here and turn off see through. And now we can see it. See, we see we have a white and black pattern, but it's very huge. So what we need to do in here is change this to something like 32. Tiling by 32. Okay, that might be a little bit too much. Let's go with 24. Now I'm going to say that that recursive packing did an amazing job, actually, because what you see here, there are a few areas where the the, the checkers. Let's get out of edge faces now. Let's put this away for the moment, and let's get out of edge faces so we can just see the checker pattern. What we want is pretty much what we have here. That's actually amazing that it did that great of a job. Usually when we do the recursive packing, it ends up making the hands too big and, the, and then the, the checkers are really small on the hands and maybe the shirt is too small and we have really massive you know, checkers on there. But these, we, the idea of doing that material on here is to check our, our character to see how the, um, uh, how the, uh, the checkers are fitting. Now I'm, say, I'm thinking that the um, Perhaps the, the head is just a little bit too big, and that's what's making the, or rather too small, it's making the, um, uh, the checker pattern. But then I'm, I'm rethinking this as I'm saying it actually, because really the checkers on the face are pretty close to the same size as the checkers on the, um, on the rest of the character. They don't have to be exact, but what we don't want, and let me show you what I mean here. Let's open the, uh, up the, uh, let's go back into modify tab and go to, to the material editor and one of the things you need to understand how to do the unwrap UVW I mean uh, the modifier here and what you want one of the things you want to learn how to do is to go in here and, and check some things and what you do is you go to this button right here here under edit UVs and open the UV editor and that's showing you what we got going on here so let's select that head okay I can select the head here and it's showing you all the verts to show the uh, the polygons let me zoom in just a little bit tighter on this guy so I can select that head a little bit better. There we go. I'm getting just all the polygons. And that's got all the polygons selected here. Now, if I was to scale this up and down, watch what happens to the, um, to the size of those checkers as I'm going up and down. See? I get it smaller, the checkers get bigger. I make it bigger, the checkers get smaller. Okay, so it's directly related to the size of the UVs on here. And, and right now is the time that we want to make sure before we start making textures, because once we make textures, okay, once we make textures and put them on here, we don't want to mess with these anymore. Because if we do, like resize them or change them or whatever, or change, move them around or whatever, it'll, it'll mess up our, our, our textures. So uh, one of the things we're going to be doing later on, too, is go into here and... Uh, or sorry, in here, and choose this, and say reset texture list, and there we go. Of course, now what's already in here is this checker pattern. So there's our actual checker pattern right there. 
The one that was in there was like a default checker pattern that was just there. But this is showing us the actual material that's applied to here. Now, as we create more and more materials, we can go in there and, and cho choose the diffused uh, you know, um, material. Uh, and it'll show that later on when we have that made because it's going to act when we load that in, in, uh, into our material editor and apply it to our character. But for right now, this is looking very good. Now, the other thing that we can do, and I'm going to go back in to reset this. I'm just going to go with this, uh, this, this checker pattern because it's lighter in value. And that's not the actual one that's actually applied to our character right now, but it doesn't look bad. It looks okay. Um, but it's just a, a way of us... Uh, being able to kind of see is this a logical enough pattern well with our character it's fairly simple we know that this is a shoe we know this is the bottom of the shoe we know that's the bottom of the shoe we know this is the shoe and if we're uncertain all we have to do is select it and go well I don't know where that is you know uh, let me see where that is and uh, we can zoom out and go okay oh that's the bottom of the of that shoe right there plus there's a couple of polygons selected right there on the inside of the the pants or shirt or whatever that's actually the pants because remember we made the seam around the outside here so there's that, that kind of stuff going on here if i wanted to check and see uh is this the outside of the hand or is this the inside of one of the hands this is the palm of the right hand okay and this is the the outside of the left hand of his left hand and so forth so could we go in here and reorganize these? Absolutely, and now would be the time to do it if we wanted to do that. But honestly, this is fitting so nicely and working out just, just great. Uh, it kind of did a pretty decent logical thing. All these, most of these um, uh, you know, smaller parts, this are the bottoms, the bottoms of the shoe, uh, you know, the, this is the arm right here. Okay, so this is like one of the arms. And so that's that arm right there. And I can tell, you know how I could tell, is because we have an elbow in there, and I remember that shape. See that shape that we made? So this is the other arm. And all you have to do if you're not certain, like I said, is go in here and just select it and see what shows up in the viewport. All right, so we're set now. Believe it or not, we're in pretty darn good shape. I'm going to go back to uh, showing our regular checker pattern. Okay? Because that's actually the, one, the pattern that's applied in our material editor right here. I'm going to put this away. All right, so we can go in there and take a look at that. If we wanted to, we could show this at 16 and 16 so that there's, you know, larger checkers and it's just whatever. However we want to display it, you know, whatever helps us to see what's going on. Okay, this is a temporary um, uh, material that we're, going, we're using, as I said, just to display, uh, you know, uh, the evenness of, our, of our, um, our UVW mapping. And it's working out pretty darn good so far. All right, so um, the next step is going to be to actually start beginning to, to work on making textures. And we're going to create diffuse maps. We're going to create, um, you know, some bump maps sometime. Uh, we're going to create maybe some specular maps and, and so forth. And, and we're going to create those in what's called Viewport Canvas. Uh, it's a new tool in 3ds Max. It actually started with 3ds Max 2011. Um, and we're going to start using that to, instead of using Photoshop exclusively, which is what we used to do, uh, to actually create our textures. Uh, and we're going to do that by actually literally painting those textures right on our character. It's one of the coolest tools that, that 3ds Max came up with recently. All right, so uh, that's what the next video is going to be all about.